What's the latest? Well, we know from the largest forward-looking study on diet and cancer ever performed by humanity, the incidence of all cancers combined lower among vegetarians than meat eaters, um, especially some of the fastest growing tumors like lymphomas and uh, leukemias, and for that the worst meat was actually poultry chicken. Up to triple the rates for every 50 grams of poultry consumption. A quarter of a chicken breast, triple your risk. Normally this whole presentation would be in the kind of quiz show format, but there was a scheduling mix up. I was supposed to be the last speaker at night, at night, and so I could go long and not interfere with the schedule, but anyway, won't happen again. And so next year, back to the quiz show format. And apologize, I had to cut this short. Um, okay, but the link between meat and cancer is such that even the Journal of Meat Science last year asked, should we become vegetarians? <laughs> or they said, can we make meat safer? There's a bunch of additives, for example, you know, that can suppress the toxic effects of the blood-based iron, the, the heme iron found in meat. Now, the, the additives are still under, uh, under study, but could provide an acceptable way to prevent colon cancer, right? Because avoiding meat, obviously, completely out of the question. I mean, that's... <laughs> they fear that if the National Cancer Institute recommendations to reduce meat consumption were, observed, were adhered to, sure, cancer incidents may be reduced, but farmers in the meat industry would suffer important economic problems. Now, for those of us more concerned about the suffering caused by the meat industry rather than the suffering of the meat industry, <laughs> what happens if you put cancer on a vegan diet? Well, the Pritikin Research Foundation just completed this elegant series of experiments which I want to spend a bit of time on. Simple experiments. They put people on different diets, draw their blood, and then drip their blood on cancer cells growing in a petri dish and just stood back to see whose blood was better at suppressing cancer growth. They are the ones that published that study showing that the blood of those on a vegan diet was dramatically less hospitable to cancer. Now even the blood of those on a standard American diet fights cancer. I mean, if it didn't, everybody would be dead, right? Um, it's just that the blood of those eating vegan fights about eight times better. The blood of those on a standard American diet suppresses cancer growth by about 9%. You put people on a plant-based diet for a year, though, and their blood just tears it up. Right? The blood circulating through the bodies of vegans has nearly eight times the stopping power when it comes to cancer cell growth. Now this is for prostate cancer, most common uh, cancer among men. For women, it's breast cancer. So the Pritikin researchers tried duplicating the study with women using breast cancer cells instead. Now they didn't want to wait a whole year to get the results, so they figured they'd try to see what a plant-based diet could do in just two weeks against three different um, types of human breast cancer. This is the before, um, cancer growth rates powering away at 100%, and then this is after eating a plant-based diet for just 14 days. Now, slowing down cancer growth is, is great, but getting rid of them, getting rid of cancer cells is even better. This is before and after measuring cancer cell death, right? Um, this is the before and this is the after, pre and post plants. The same blood now coursing through these women's bodies gained the power to significantly slow down and stop breast cancer growth thanks to just two weeks of eating a plant-based diet. What kind of blood do we want in our body? What kind of immune system, right? Do we want blood that's just kind of gonna kind of roll over when new cancer cells pop up? Right? Or do we want blood circulating to every nook and cranny within our bodies with the power to slow down and stop them? Now this strengthening of cancer defenses was after 14 days of a plant-based diet and exercise. They were out walking 30 to 60 minutes a day. 
wait, well, maybe the only reason their bodies became, you know, so effective at suppressing cancer cell growth was because of the exercise. Maybe diet didn't have anything to do with it. So they put it to the test. This is measuring cancer cell clearance. And this is what we saw before, the effect of blood taken from those eating a plant-based diet, in this case for 14 years, along with mild exercise, just like a walking every day, right? So, plant-based diets, walking, that's the kind of cancer cell clearance you get. Now, compare that to the cancer stopping power of your average sedentary, you see this little burger, burger, apple, oh, sorry, I can't, all right. <laughs> On the website, it's a little, easier. okay, but okay. Okay, compared to the cancer stopping power of your average sedentary meat eater, which is basically non-existent. Okay, but what about this middle group? Now this middle group, instead of 14 years on a plant-based diet, they had 14 years of the standard American diet, but had daily strenuous hour-long exercise, like boot camp this morning. Seriously, calisthenics, right? They wanted to know if you exercise hard enough and long enough, can you rival some, uh, some, some, uh, some uh, strolling vegans? All right. <laughs> Let's find out. And exercise worked, no question, right? But literally 5,000 hours in the gym, no match, for a plant-based diet. Here's an actual photomicrograph of uh, cancer cells stained so that they release light when they die. Right? As you can see in the control group, there are a few cancer cells dying. Right? Uh, even if you're a couch potato eating fried potatoes, uh, your body's not totally defenseless. But here's the hardcore strenuous exercise group, right? Cancer cells dying left and right, but nothing appears to kick cancer butt more than a plant-based diet. <laughs> Why, though? Some people don't care, but I'm, I'm, I'm always curious. All right. How does a simple dietary change right, make one's bloodstream so inhospitable to cancer after just a few days? We didn't know until last year, when they sought to determine the underlying mechanisms for these anti-cancer effects. Right. And it is a wild story. I have a whole series of videos coming out about it. Um, the story involves little people and big people and big dogs and little dogs. Uh, it, involves, it involves marshmallows, Tinker Toys, Cannibalism, and Vegan Bodybuilders. I from beefsteak to beefcake. I, it's, uh, I wish I had time, believe me. But uh, the videos will be up soon. Bottom line, the answer to the Pritikin puzzle is IGF-1. Insulin-like growth factor 1. Is the cancer-promoting growth hormone involved in every stage of cancer growth, spread, metastases, cancer invasion. But you put people on a plant-based diet and their IGF-1 levels, IGF-1 levels, plant-based diet go down. And if they continue to be on a plant-based diet, this is just after a few weeks, um, if you're on a plant-based diet low term, low, long term, um, levels drop even further. And their IGF-1 binding proteins go up. That's one of the ways our body suppresses cancer growth. Protect itself from cancer. Protect itself from excessive growth by releasing this binding protein into the bloodstream to bind up, to tie up IGF-1. It's like our body's, uh, you know, kind of emergency break. Yes, in as a little as 11 days, right, a plant-based diet can reprogram your body to bring down IGF-1 production. Right? But what about all the IGF-1 that's circulating from the you know, bacon and eggs you ate last week? Right? So the liver releases the snatch squad of binding proteins to tie up, um, to, to take all this IGF-1 out of circulation. And as you can see, it just gets better um, with time the longer we eat healthy. Here's the experiment that nailed IGF-1 as the villain. All right, same as last time. Go on a plant-based diet plant-based diet, 
and cancer cell growth rates drop dramatically. Right? And cancer cell death shoots up. Already saw that. But then, here's the kicker. Right? What if you added back to the cancer the exact same amount of IGF-1 banished from your body by eating a plant-based diet? Eating plant-based diet goes back. Let's take that same IGF-1, add it back to the cancer, and see what happens, and it erases the diet and exercise effect. It's as if you never started eating healthy at all. Right. So that's how we know that lowering animal product consumption leads to lower IGF-1, which leads to lower cancer growth. But how low does our animal product consumption have to go? I mean, how plant-based do our diets have to get? Well, let's look at the IGF-1 levels of meat eaters compared to vegetarians compared to vegans. Right? Does a plant-based diet, um, uh, is it better at uh, lowering uh, circulating levels of IGF-1 compared to a meat eating diet or a lacto-ovo diet? And this is what they found. Right? Only the vegans, so meat eaters, vegetarians, vegans, only the vegans <laughs> had significantly lower levels. And the same relationship was found with IGF-1 binding protein levels. Right? That's what we want higher. Again, we've got nothing here. Um, one really had to go to that final step, vegans, um, uh, to significantly bind up all that excess IGF-1 in their bloodstreams. Right. This was a study done uh, um, on women. What about, <laughs> what about vegan men? They found, <laughs> they found the same thing. So even though vegan men tend to have significantly higher levels of testosterone than both vegetarians and meat eaters, um, uh, which actually can, can promote the growth of prostate cancer. But the reason vegans, a vegan diet can actually reverse the progression of cancer, um, uh, which we've saw, I've shown you in previous years, um, the Dean Ornish work, um, uh, may be uh, because of how low their IGF-1 levels are. So high testosterone, but still low cancer in the vegans. The bottom line is that male or female, right? Just eating a vegetarian diet did not seem to cut it, right? Didn't do your body many favors. Right? Looks like to get that significant drop in that cancer promoting um, a growth hormone levels, one really has to move towards eliminating animal products altogether. Now the good news is, is that now based on what we know about IGF-1, we can predict um, that a vegan diet uh, may be profoundly protective with respect to risk, for example, um, for breast cancer in older women. Okay, just 13 leading causes of death to go. Um, all right, let's run through the list here. The top three killers used to be heart disease, cancer, stroke. Oh, that is so 2011. <laughs> Now it's heart disease, cancer, and COPD, like emphysema. Right? 